Jump into the first question. Do you still use uh, Lion's Mane 8 to 1? Yes, this, um, that's the form that I use. It's been the best form, though. I will admit with Lion's Mane, what so is like all of the versions have worked for me, different brands, even the one to one. What um, there, um, Nootropic Steepo actually had an article where they went over uh, Lion's Mane 1 to 1 versus 8 to 1 and did a nice summary of the pros and cons. And you get to learn like the 1 to 1 is better when it comes to, when it comes to, um, um, comes to things like your overall health comes to things like uh, decreasing um, inflammation, all that, whereas cognitive stuff, like, um, sorry about that. Yeah, when it comes to like looking for a better memory, better mood, I would definitely look at the eight to one. And somebody else asked, what's up, guys? Let me know where you're from as you're jumping into this. Excited that we got some time for some Q&A, and this is about you. It's not about me. Let's go ahead and answer some questions in a very rapid fire rapid fire format. Um, see, people have, uh, people have asked Michael Howe's thesis. Thesis is like a... Man, there's, oh, I don't know if I can show you. It's, there's so many nootropic blends out there these days, but this one's pretty cool in that you actually like um, fill in a questionnaire about your state, kind of uh, where, what, like what your goals are, where you're most challenged, and then they send you like a customized stack. So that was pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, I just got it yesterday. I'm giving it a shot, but it, it looks amazing. Ingredients look rock solid, the ingredient profile. My only complaint is that they should have told me there was stimulants. I specifically asked for no caffeine. Um, and they threw in like some dynamine there and some theocrine, which I would have appreciated. And there should always be a warning out there because we want to know, like, although they have, for example, excuse me, I'll just pull this out. Like we got over here, we got a stack for, um, logic, logic. I may take that in the afternoon, but I may as well take it in the evening or in, um, sometime later. And so if logic has caffeine or some form of a stimulant in there, I would like to know about it. So I don't take it in the evening because I'm super sensitive. Yo, what's good? Matt, Colton, Kim, uh, Chris, Founds Fox, Matt, Colton. Cool, cool, cool. Don't see any questions yet, so I'm going to look up at the actual comment box on YouTube. Yeah, you guys ask a ton of questions on the YouTube comments. Know that I always get to them. Um, I've noticed I've tried Tonkat Alley for two weeks now, and the fatigue is unbelievable. Definitely watch the video that I put out there on uh, the side effects of Tonkat Alley because you get to learn like you need to understand Tonkat Alley and how to use it before you start ingesting it. Because we've all been through been through that, of, you know, the first six weeks taking Tonkat Alley, wondering why I'm nauseous and not feeling great. And um, you get to know you need to take it with a meal, ideally like a larger meal, because if you take it in the state when you're fasted, you're going to feel nauseous. You may you may want to feel like vomiting, but it is a very, very, very powerful supplement for testosterone. Tonkat Alley is amazing. I really like it. A dosage of like 200 milligrams once a day works pretty well. And you'll notice your lifts being better. You'll notice like just your general like um, bone health being better as far as us, um, especially people who lift weights. And the 10% is less fatiguing to me. Yeah, the, um, that's a great observation. What Fallon's Fox is referring to are the two variations of Tonkat Alley. There, like there's a 10% extract as well, which is in the tablet form. Um, he's mentioning that it's less fatiguing for, for him. And I, yeah, I've got that form as well. I'm going to give it a shot again. Jinko and BDF talk faster human. I don't know if, I don't know if you're being sarcastic there. Am I, am I talking too fast? I don't think I am. Um, Jinko and BDF. Well, first Jinko Biloba is what he's referring to. And BDN, BDNF brain derived nootropic factor is one of the mechanisms responsible for overall like brain health and, um, building synapses, neuroplasticity, all that. So it's some good stuff. Jinko Biloba, not probably one of the more effective things. Look at Nupep, look at CMAX. There's some research even suggesting that melatonin could be good, but more importantly, like exercise, get sunlight, sleep well, have uh, different experiences, travel, go try foods that are that aren't something where you know something which you would usually eat and get some experiences that way. Cool. What's a good nootropic for motivation to do tedious tasks when I'm spending too much time with distractions like browsing the internet? That's a great question. Tedious tasks, repetitive tasks. I really like pramiracetam. Pramiracetam is the one best thing for willpower, discipline, consistency, repetitive work. Very often, the money is in the repetitive work, unfortunately, the boring work, and you're going to need to get through that. And just watch out for caffeine. Like I've noticed like with uh, stimulants sp specifically, they're good at getting you started. But when I took a year off of caffeine, I think it was um, 2018, like just after coming to it from a Tony Robbins event, Tony Robbins is like, guys, no meat, no sugar, no alcohol, drop the caffeine just for 30 days. And I did it. I wanted to get off of caffeine, stayed off of it for a good year. And that was the one thing like what surprised me was 
my workouts weren't as good, but I was way more consistent and far less distractible throughout the whole course of the day. More consistent. My work ethic actually improved, but um, I got eventually back on caffeine because you're, you're you know, just kind of in a better mood. And yeah, still works itself out. Hope that's helpful. Hey, are big amounts of um, N-acetylcysteine, that's what Doom Guy is referring to. And thanks for asking. Um, two grams a day, dangerous. I wouldn't say dangerous. <laughs> it's it's not uh, like a scary stimulant with that kind of like uh, precaution on the initial breaks. For some days, I've been having weird headaches and I feel like I'm on the brink of going crazy. Wow. Why not consider stopping ingesting such a big dose of it? I've also started using lion's mane, taking four per day. Well, that's not really too clear, too clear about the lion's mane because you're not sharing how much the serving size is, although although you did that with um, NAC. I, well, first, I don't, I mean, I don't know why you're taking so much. Obviously, try a lower dose. Perhaps try a different brand of, of it. And people react differently with this one. Some people notice like they no, they have less OCD like symptoms. Surprisingly, I didn't really notice much from it. I just heard that it could be better pre workout. So that's why I started taking just very small amounts of it. Didn't see too much of a benefit. Heck, I'm still taking it because I've got a lot and it's, it can be good for building your immune system. But uh, if other people have thoughts on that as far as what NAC did for them, then drop it in the comment because you're seeing you're you see it more marketed as like a health product, anti aging. But I'm assuming most of you are like me, you know. In your 30s and your 20s, just trying to make a lot of money and be more productive. So it's helpful to know. Dog food is the best nootropic. I've never tried it, so um, wouldn't know about that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, ideas. Okay. Yeah. That comment needs to be erased. Yeah. Caffeine by itself doesn't help me focus at all. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's it's tricky. You, you know, smaller doses, higher doses. You got to find what works for you. What stack would you recommend for a person who has a coding job from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., but also plays a sport, BJJ, in the evening? Because I have no idea what BJJ is. Um, as far as the stack is concerned, Rodeo La Rosea, really good stuff. Pacopa Maneri, um, L-tyrosine specifically. Rodeo La Rosea is like the best thing when it comes to anti-fatigue. So especially you as a coder, you're going to need like that, that mental clarity. You're going to, excuse me, you're going to need to be sharp. You're going to have to build your um, like just awareness. And also it does a good job um, suppressing your appetite, which is obviously good. So Rodeo La Rosea, I would go with the 3% um, salidricide from Nootropics Depot. That one's pretty good. But if you get it somewhere else, it doesn't make too much of a difference. You can't really go wrong with it. And the nice serving um, serving size to start off with would be 300 milligrams. 500 milligrams is also common. I don't think there's too much of a difference. But one of the, one of the greatest things about Rodeo La Rosea, minimal if if not, no side effects, you'll very, yeah, you won't hear about them too often and it's inexpensive too. I guess I don't have much trouble with tedious tasks once I'm already started. Um, okay, great. So Chris is saying just actually starting the tasks. New pep is great. That's where stimulants are, are very, very often like good for people, not necessarily in like the longevity of the work, but just like getting started, having a sip of coffee, finding something. So new pep was always like my go-to when it came to just actually getting started with the work. So it doesn't bother me that new pep is very short lasting because it is, it's um, one and a half hours, maybe two hours, but you feel alert, you feel kind of awake. You feel like, okay, what is the most important uh, thing on my to-do list to get done. And then you can get started with them. Rosemary and memory of your experience doesn't do anything for it. I haven't, I haven't necessarily tried it for like six months, but I've tried it here and there and yeah, you know, it didn't do much. Can ashwagandha detrimental to your work ethic and motivation? Yes, Jacob. It's, it's about just knowing yourself for people who are kind of like me, you're just wired in a way like you love working. What's my why? My why is growth. I need to be better than yesterday. So if you're, you know, you already have a good work ethic then I and, and you're not really concerned about that because that's just the way you're wired, then I think ashwagandha could be appropriate. But more so if you're somebody that struggles a little bit with um, motivation, it's okay. It's normal. Then I would just be very mindful of how ashwagandha is affecting you. But the great thing about ashwagandha is like, if you notice that as soon as you take it, that you're a little bit demotivated, then what you then what, what you do instead is you leave it until the later portion of the day. Because the way an ashwagandha works for most people is it takes some time to get kind of saturated in your system. You need to take it for a good seven to 10 days, and then you start to get the benefit all the time. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm not having my first uh, serving of ashwagandha until about like four o'clock PM. And then I'm taking um, Shodan, which is a specific form of ashwagandha that's better for sleep. I'm taking that right before I sleep, something like 125 milligrams. That's uh, S-H-O-D-E-N, like Nancy. Um, outside of 
Lion's Mane, what's a good social nootropic? Yeah, Lion's Mane is the best. Lion's Mane will make you comfortable being uncomfortable. It's amazing. It will help you um, maintain good relationships with people. Have like, you know, just have the insight to know you shouldn't burn bridges in any way. Be good to people. Um, come from a place of value. Get to know them. So it's great that way. And time is also really great for that, especially like social anxiety. So um, when you say social, I mean, it's like social anxiety is one thing as far as like, is it hard for you to actually talk to people? And the second thing is like, once you're talking to people, making yourself have a more effective conversation as far as like uh, verbal fluency and stuff. And that's where the rest times could be good too. Best stack for pre-sex for performance. I haven't found anything which works. I don't think anything works. Uh, you'll see Yohimbine often marketed um tribulus perhaps maybe tonkat alley kind of all those supplements that would help to boost your libido but as far as like something to take i i mean i i don't know and i've not found any anything just from reading other on other people's experiences oxyrastam versus pramorastam for motivation slash slash uh discipline it would be like pramorastam i think if you're if you can already get started with it like get started with your work like using new pep you know, get to work, stay on your schedule, then you can use prime rest time accordingly, like it's good kind of in the middle of your work. But oxy rest time is going to be more powerful to actually want to get started in the first place, if that makes sense. So when you know, when it when it comes to like actually getting started, um, oxy rest time would, would be better when it comes to like, you know, you're somebody who can, you know, put in a good one or two hours, but then you need to really turn the discipline on then prime rest time would be better in that kind of way. And that's why it may sound crazy, but Use both. <laughs> I use both. I use oxyrastam, pramrastam, anrastam, and prastam, and I love them. Like the the majority of the other nootropics. Yeah, I think like most of the other nootropics I just used afterwards because I started with the rastams and then you move forward that way. I'm so I'm yeah I'm really surprised when people don't talk about the rastams, especially on YouTube from like just seeing some other YouTubers and what they're putting out out about nootropics. Ways to lower acetylcholine beside rastams. Um. Dusty, tell me more about that and what you're really trying to do. He loves cocoa tea. Very cool. Yes, Pram time. Hella expensive. That's one problem. Thoughts on reishi mushroom? Um, overrated in most cases. I'm sure a lot of you would disagree with me. In fact, um, the, the thing with nootropics, we're looking for some sort of short-term benefit. Like, I always want to notice something from it because there's so many things to buy and they can get expensive. Lion's Mane has been the best for me. Um, I've not personally noticed much of an experience with cordyceps um, or reishi mushroom themselves. Maybe other people do, but reishi is one more around like immunity, um, having good health, avoiding sickness. So um, I personally don't take it. I have a bunch of blends with it that sometimes I use, but don't expect a miracle. More like, you know, if you're somebody that's more prone to getting sick, then I would then I would strongly consider taking it or something. Anti-gravity nootropics. What the heck does that mean? Um basketball tryouts to COVID or flu and I'm having a tryout. Don't go to the basketball tryouts. How about that? Focus on your health. You know, your body will be, will be thanking you afterwards. Want to try intermittent fasting? Then don't try it. Then just do it, man. Just do it. Just have a, have a big meal before you sleep one day. Um, likely you shouldn't be that hungry the next day. You can fast for a good 10 hours. If you know, if you want to cheat, take a like a black coffee. That's what a lot of people do. They you know they say it doesn't really have any calories, or you take a caffeine pill. But if you just want like fast, fast, that's where it's a little bit more intense. And I've done that very few times. I've done like a full day fast probably three times in my life. I know I know people that do it once a year. It's it's a not that it's a bit much, but more so it's just like do the benefits outweigh the cons because the cons being like you know like just muscle sparing you're gonna lose muscle um excuse me you're gonna lose muscle tissue there's no way around it but i'm open to being wrong about that if anyone can share some insights and we got some crazy questions over here man come on guys okay one more by colton i'm, I'm gonna kick him out so colton this is your last warning but i love you for being here either way what is the benefit uh that you have that you have from fasting on your brain um, it's just, it's very interesting when you notice what life is like when you don't have these uh, blood sugar kind of just changes. And usually in the day, you know, you eat something and then a few hours later, you kind of feel irritable because you need a little bit more food and you don't go through that experience. Like when you just fast, your state and your mood is very predictable during the day, if that makes sense. But there are, are warnings with it as well. Like, especially when you're fasted, you need to be really mindful of what kind of exercise you're doing. And like, for example, if you do um, high intensity interval training. It's so strenuous on the body. 
uh, you need to get like a recovery drink in, or you just need to kind of train yourself to be able to fast afterwards because your blood sugar, your like your blood sugar levels will drop. You can feel feel very fatigued and and uncomfortable. So that's the best thing as far as like um, great you know great advantages. Other otherwise, I don't really know. Yeah, Nupec, uh, Nupec makes me get going even on des undesirable tasks. Absolutely, Nupec is a money maker. It's a money maker. And hey, guys, if if you are going through a a hard time right now, don't worry. Nothing bad lasts. Nothing bad lasts. I'm familiar with your stack, but just to get a reference and to compare it to my own, when does your workday start and end? I like put a put a good twelve hours of work in. I'm like a 24-6 kind of guy, not 24-7. Or I'll take like a half day half day off on Saturday. Um, hey, can you do a video about nootropics for people suffering with HPPD? What is HPPD? Please elaborate. Does Tonkat Alley have any benefits uh, for blood glucose? Not that I know of. I think there's better things you can be taking for that specifically, like alpha lipoic acid, uh, chromium, green tea extract. That's a really good one. Or just drinking like green tea itself. Just be mindful. Green tea has caffeine. So there's green tea um, decaf out there. That really works for me. And um, as far as like nootropic benefits and benefits outside of building muscle, improving your libido, you'd be pretty disappointed with Tonkat Ali. More information on that. Watch the video on Tonkat Ali for sure. Uh, did you find your mind to help work performance, particularly for salespeople? Yes, in a very interesting way. <laughs> like with your mind, it gives this nervous anxious energy level <laughs> that I think if you're somebody that is doing more of a sales, like a, like a sales job where you're extroverted, you need to like, you know, you're outside, you're mingling with people. It's great. But if you're a salesperson, that's like living behind a CRM, like a client relationship manager, you're entering names, you know, you're talking to people and then you're sending out emails and you're texting and all this stuff. Then I don't think Yohimban is the best thing because it kind of does impair your judgment to some extent. But with uh, Yohimban, if, if, I, if I used it with caffeine, for example, and L-tyrosine, wow, you just feel so euphoric. You want to go talk to people. You feel like a little bit ang um, anxious, but it's okay. It's, you just, you know, you got to just tell yourself it's, it's not the end of the world. This is just how Yohimban feels. It's really tricky, this supplement. I mean, you'll learn how to take it after like your 100th serving. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I've had good months when I was taking Yohimban. And guys, if, if there's any... People out there that are that love selling things, love selling on the street. I've got a safer job for you. Get your real estate license. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the U.S., if you're in Canada, if you're in India, hit me up. Uh, send me an Instagram message, preferably on my other account, Michael Dougal Toronto, and I can I can share with you what I'm doing and how we're working together, man. Like sales is the best job in the world. Sales is the best job, and hey, it's hard, but you do the hard things and you live it easy life. New prep. Um, what the heck kind of question? What is your mainstream of income and how has nootropics helped you in the source of income? My mainstream of income is um, selling houses, selling houses, closing houses. You make commissions um, that are going to depend based on the purchase price, right? So two and a half percent, three percent of a purchase price, for example. And that's always been the case. I've been a licensed realtor since 2013. And the way and I use nootropics like as soon as I got started. Well, actually prior because I was using pre-workout supplements and, you know, you can say there are nootropics as well, since they've got L-tyrosine, they've got vitamin B, they've got taurine. They often have some good stuff that can help you with productivity and performance. And then I used uh, Prastam. I used the Racetams. I added in um, Rhodiola rosea when I, when I made some money because Rhodiola rosea is so darn expensive, or it was back then. And yeah, just kind of added nootropics. Like it's all connected. I mean, it's not just the nootropics. It's working out. It's personal development. It's drinking a lot of water. Like nootropics really just give you that, you know, give you that extra boost that you need. Um, is there any reason to take alpha GPC on its own or only with a racetam? Absolutely. I think it's a great idea to take it by take it by itself. It still falls under that category of one of the best nootropics out there, regardless of nootropic stacks, whatever you're taking. So I would highly recommend it. I think the more work you're doing in the day, the more if um, the more important it becomes for you to take alpha GPC. You can just consider like brain fuel to some extent, especially if you're fasting, if you're fasting even more so. Do you have any suggestions? Okay, yeah, uh, message me or maybe ask on um, Discord. Take a choline supplement, CDP choline, choline by tartrate. That one's worse. Alpha GPC is better. Uh, uh, Nupet makes me sneeze. Is this bad? How do you know, Anas? I'd love to know a little bit more about that. Thoughts on Nigella Sativa? So I tried it. I didn't notice too much of a benefit. That was me and my experience. Same, um, and same can be said with a lot of some of like the more like newer uh, nootropics that are marketed, unfortunately. Well, Jay, what is up? Good to see you here. 
And how long do you let the powder under your tongue when I, um, great question. So Anas asks about, you know, because I've mentioned on videos, there's two ways to ingest Nupep, actually three. Number one is spraying it like a nasal spray, which you can find some, some places. Number two would be taking it in the capsule form. But number three, which is my favorite is just taking a little bit of the powder, placing it under your tongue, leaving it there. I think like 30 to 45 seconds is fine. If you go longer, nothing wrong with that. It's just kind of a waste of yeah, a waste of your mouth. You can't drink water and then you should be good. You should feel something, alertness. Just guys, make sure you have a scale because when you're dosing things as small as like 10 to milligra 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, you can't eyeball it. Nobody can eyeball it. I can't eyeball it, right? You can maybe just dab like a little bit on your finger once you're a bit experienced. Best nootropics to help with low energy while fasting. Oh, love it. L-tyrosine, 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 L-tyrosine. It is great. You can consider taking phosphatidylserine, but often there is uh, just a bit of trace calories with it or some sort of fat to make it more soluble and make it, um, you know, just make it more efficiently get into the bloodstream. And you notice a kind of like that spike of energy, which is good. But L-tyrosine is great. Obviously, stimulants would be great and like, you know, the strongest thing, but then you've got the side effects. And some of those would be caffeine. And then on my last video that I put out, it was alternatives to caffeine. So things like uh, theocrine, things like dynamine, um, phenylprastam. I actually took phenylprastam today and I took it on uh, Tuesday. So I'm kind of enjoying that. And it does suppress your appetite to some extent. But phenylprastam has some, I mean, all kinds of side effects. It keeps me up more than midaphanol does. And I'm just like, I'm warmer when I'm on it. I need to take freezing cold showers, like freeze in my house. So that's one way. Uh, but that's a, hey, that's a, that's a great question. And we are going to block the user, Keitan. Sorry, we gave you a chance. Message me on Instagram when you're ready to behave and I'll consider unblocking you, my friend. What do you think about, I have, I have never tried it, don't know much about it, but hey, that's what you guys like about me. I tell the truth. I work in data science. What's the best nootropic for me? Um, could you tell me a little bit more about your style of work? But um, from what I know to some extent, I mean, if it's a highly analytical job, I think um, ashwagandha would be great. I think you should probably stay away from stimulants. Look at things like Bacopa Mineri. Um, I've heard good experiences with some people with the uh, go-to cola lately, but that's a surprise since I, yeah, I didn't notice much from it. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Love it. So I think it falls in the same category of like, almost like a gamer. You need to have like a very high level of awareness. You also need to be able to like deconstruct your moves and like, what did I do wrong? You know, after your fight, when you're reflecting back. So um, I would watch out for anything that would kind of calm you down on the physical side too much. So I wouldn't use ashwagandha, for example. Caffeine and L-theanine, I hear really good things about. L-theanine being something when it comes uh, when it comes to like, you know, stress, um, you know, even performance. There was a study done on golf players and they actually performed better when they were using L-theanine. So something nice happens when you mix them both. Caffeine, you're going to get the physical energy. L-theanine is going to kind of suppress some of the negative side effects with it. And the rastams would also be good for you. Something like parastam energy, it helps with. It also helps with just the clear thinking and planning. If you can find a good nootropic that actually helps you, like and kind of plan things, be more, be a bit more strategic, be a bit more tact, um, tactful. Linesman could also be good and um, get the eight to one, which I talked about earlier in this live stream. Uh, um, hopefully, I'm not overstepping by asking this question. Uh oh. Uh, but how much do you spend on a month on your monthly stack? Mine is around. Ooh. I, I mean, I definitely spend more than that. On Patreon, I think I put out an order. I would guess it's like a, a thousand, maybe a thousand plus. Because what so is I also take um, Cytomel, which is for my thyroid. And Cytomel in itself is like 200 bucks or maybe like 150. I'm taking 50 micrograms a day. I'm not taking that many nootropics, maybe 10 to 15 a day. But um, I, I don't know. It's definitely more than that, though. That's, that's not much. And it's all going to be relative. If you're making a lot of money, if life is going good, then don't beat yourself up. I'll be that person to tell you, invest in yourself and invest in your brain health. I have an exam coming up in August. What stack do you recommend to help focus and memory? Great question. Rosalie, in two videos, I would recommend number one, uh, nootropics for studying and number two, nootropics for cramming. These are must watch, uh, watch videos. Um, Bacopa is really great. Parastam is really great. Nupep is really great. Uh, you may like Rhodiola Rosea in the sense of like, it will help you with the fatigue. It will help you to, um, uh, build your work ethic to some extent, like especially, you know, the halfway through the day, it's normal to be a little bit tired and need to refocus. That's when Rhodiola Rosea could be very good. And caffeine, I've not personally had a good experience with. Maybe others can share, but as far as like it being a, a stimulant, um, you can get through material very quickly, but then with caffeine very often, it's like you haven't memorized anything because often when it comes to actually retaining things in your memory, you need to build some sort of emotional 
connection with your material. You need to enjoy your material. Very difficult caffeine. Just kind of like, you know, get through. Hope that's helpful. What nootropics would you put in a smoothie? <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't because I wouldn't want my smoothie to taste bad. I would put some cocos, like some dark chocolate. I'd put some uh, blueberries and some other stuff for brain health, like flax seeds. And it'd be good. What do you think of Ritalin? I enjoyed it when I was on it looking back because it was like a grade lower than Concerta. You could say, well, Concerta is just, you know, higher dose, extended release, all that. Um, I found it pretty short lasting. For those of you who don't know, it's for ADD, ADHD, helps with focus, helps with concentration, really does boost your mood. And what I liked about it looking back was like, you don't really notice you're on something. Whereas you look at um, some other things like Vyvanse and especially Adderall, you do not feel like yourself. Your judgment is off. You know in your heart of hearts you shouldn't be taking it. Like, what the heck? I can't do this forever, but I've got to make the most of it. With with um, Ritalin, one thing, it is a bit subtle. I think it's good for anyone like experience like a bit of a low. And when I was on Concerta, yeah, I got a lot done. For two months, I made a lot of money selling houses. I as well um, finished my, um, um, my uh, degree. I was in business school. I was barely sleeping, like, four or five hours a day, but it got me through that. But then when you get, when I got off of a Concerta and I was on like, I think a dose of 27 milligrams. Oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. Bad mood, social isolation, slower thinking, all that. So what goes on, what goes up must go down. If you respond to it in a way in which it's like very stimulating, just expect that it's not going to be a pleasant experience when you're coming off of it. I feel like 90% of my issues were from low T. I've had some luck with Shilajit. Awesome. Yeah, that's good to hear. I have a 400 score. So far, the supps that work for me were vitamin D, Shilajit, and Alpha GPC. Test clears a lot up. That's amazing. Will J. Moore, thank you so much. And all the viewers should thank you for sharing that because we don't have too many people that are actually talking about testosterone and, and mentioning their scores, myself included. So thank you for that. Why do you why don't you ever mingle in the Discord room? Um, nobody ever <laughs> nobody asks. I, I can start doing that. Um, here and there I do punch in some comments. I punch in the videos, but yeah, it seems like you are, you, could, you guys are kind of all talking to each other. No, nope. when there's questions, I will chime in. I will be mindful, mindful of checking it. So uh, note, over the next week, I will be checking it daily. That is my commitment for you. And I was, you know, Colin, I'm, I was waiting for somebody to ask me that because I was like checking. It's like growing 700, 750, 800. I do check up on it from time to time just so you know. Um, yes, of course, we know about that. Best nootropics for doing sales job and being present, man. Just get a coach. <laughs> is doing a sales job without a coach is is not a not a nice life. A lot of uh, rejection and um, fear, a lot of fear and anxiety. So best nootropics though, um, Nupep, Oxyrastam, Lion's Mane being very good at just keeping you calm, kind of like slowing down the conversation. Because let's say you like you knock on someone's door, it's normal to be nervous, and you need to just you know you're in fight or flight mode, and if you don't perform well under pressure, right? You need to be in state. That's where Lion's Mane really does help out. Uh, could you do a video on your favorite nootropic and how you take them? Um, the the closest thing to that, Colin, I could tell you, well, I, I believe you're somebody newer to the channel. Like a lot of you aren't, for instance, for instance, is watch the video on the top five nootropics and just, yeah, just go binge watch my videos. And if you don't like the long videos, then watch them in 1.5 times speed or go to the go to the beginning of my channel because you can rank the videos from oldest um, to newest and the oldest videos bring that like they were two to three minute um, forms now I know because I've raised the production quality making longer content a lot of you like more detail so that's what we're doing but I'm um, we're in this together we're in this together good job also ashwagandha or however it's spelled is great too for test but um, gives some apathy for after a while going down for the low Going down the low cortisol pathway to boost test makes me further from being driven to succeed. Yep, that's what we talked about. It's a known thing for sure. Cold-blooded. <laughs> hey, Mike, what's your favorite nootropic for cold-blooded robotic logic? Like being a robot and logical itself would be probably primarast time. I would stay away from Lion's Mane. It will get you social, kind of um, unfocused, but in a good way. Because sometimes we can get too focused and too boxed in. Um, Nupat being really great. L-tyrosine being really, um, really great, um, caffeine being good too. And um, yeah, um, nothing else comes to mind. I, I think I understand your question, although I'm not, ent and I'm not entirely sure. I've been looking for phenylprostam. Okay, yeah, we're, we're skipping comments like that. So for those of you who are trying to get those questions in, go to the Discord instead. I want to try Bacopa, but don't want apathy. Coffee makes me a bit jittery, so I'm trying Yerba. Yeah, people have great success from with uh, Yerba. That's one which I did not cover in my last video, Five Alternatives to Caffeine. 
perhaps I could have included it. I don't have enough experience with it. So that's one option. Uh, Bacopa, I would, I would still say try it. Like, yes, people talk about the negatives and the side effects of Bacopa, but it's, it's not even 50% of people. It's maybe 20 to 30% of people. If you go with a small dose, 300 milligrams of Bacopa, um, whether it's the Bacognize or it's the Synapsa, it's solid. It helps me have a lot of energy. I take Bacopa. I'm like just suddenly like more present. I've got a bit more energy. I'm still very productive. So I've not helped. I've not found it personally as affecting me that way. And what I like most about it, I mean, it takes a bit of time to get the benefit with respect to having an, an improved memory. Because that's why a lot of people take it. But as far as like stress, fighting fatigue, for me, it works instantly. I take it. I feel centered. I feel present. I'm more aware of my surroundings. Like I'm like checking. Okay, here's here's what I've done. Here's what I got to do. You got that kind of. Uh, restructuring going on. So it's good. Is new pep something you can take as needed or does it need to be consistently taken? A little bit of both. For some people, they notice it uh, better. Like they notice better results when they take it daily. For me, um, I'm somebody that I, I, I noticed it working instantly. In fact, I get like an acute, um, they're kind of like an acute mm, benefit with it. I take it. I notice it, like I mentioned, for a good like 90 minutes, maybe two hours. And then uh, perhaps it does work a little bit better as you continue taking it. But most importantly, it's, it's hard to judge when you just take it once. You know, you have a plan, you have a project, you have a, you have a specific style of work. What you do is take it, right? And then what's so is take it every single day and judge it after 30 days. Are the results higher? And for most people, like, they notice the results are better. With NewPep, that was my story too. I just looked at my bank account. I'm like, holy crap. Um, one thing's different is NewPep. And this is important. Like, why, why fasting is good, why, why sticking to a, like this, a similar exercise routine is good and similar diet is because it makes you more able to evaluate nootropics. Something like me, I live alone, for example. I, I have a dog. There's not a lot of changing variables. It makes it easier to just make subtle changes to nootropics and actually notice them working. Heck, if I was traveling, if I was you know, changing, changing jobs, changing diets, changing, um, changing like fitness and my exercise routine, obviously it's going to be harder. Um, not exactly nootropics, but have you heard about the seed oil debate going on? No, I have no idea about it. What are your thoughts on avoiding vegetables? I don't know much about it, but what's always I'm learning that my body's responding very well to like raw, um, like raw veggies specifically, like um, broccoli salad, you know, eating it raw. I don't do it in enough, just like everyone else. I'm human. What do you think about uridine? Overrated from my experience. Some people like it, but you won't find many people like many experienced users of nootropics saying it's in their top five, which is which is which says something. What is the biggest quantity of nootropics that you've had in your stack at any particular time? The biggest quan the only time is when maybe perhaps I was using a nootropic blend on top of my nootropics that I'm taking all the time. So that's like the four racetam is Bacopa, Mineri, um, Rhodiola Rosea, Ashwagandha. And then I've got my pre-workout supplement, which are going to have pre-workout in ingredients like uh, creatine. I don't know if, if, I don't know if that counts as a nootropic, vitamin B, uh, beta alanine, what else? L arginine, taurine, some caffeine, like I mentioned. Maybe there's a few things I'm missing. And then sometimes on top of that, if I get like a new nootropic blend or I'm trying some new products, I would try it like um, like Magteen, for example, um, Subroxy, Tonka Alley. I didn't mention that in some of the testosterone boosters. So I don't know, maybe 30, 20, 30, definitely over 20. Which nootropics do you say you feel working? Personally, I've had a lot of the famous nootropics, including L-theanine, ashwagandha, rhodiola, rosea, but outside of caffeine, I don't feel them, which is normal. Caffeine, you know, stimulants, you're obviously going to feel more. Watch the video that, that I made on 50 things I learned from fi growing to 50,000 subscribers because I covered this in depth and I want you to have some clarity instead of me just half ass the answer right now. Does finasteride affect brain health? It definitely affects how competitive you are. Unfortunately, it will slow you down to some extent, or that's what I've heard from experiences. I'm not personally taking it, but I know a lot of people that I'm close with who take it. And uh, maybe I have noticed a little bit of a difference within their behavior, but some of the one-on-one -on -one calls that I've had with uh, people on Patreon, for example, have been individuals that are on it and they're not feeling good. They are like, they're, you know, they're just the loss of general drive. And it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah, it's honestly it's just kind of sad. I don't know how, how else to say it. You have to decide between, do I want to keep my hair? <laughs> Or, um, you know, or taking this, right? Joe Rogan does affect, yeah. Okay, Aman, I answered your question. Guys, you don't need to repeat your question. I'm seeing all the questions. If I'm skipping through your message, it's because there's no question most often. Have you ever stacked Vyvanse and Adderall? Nope, I have never tried Adderall. Do you have new stuff for sleeping? I'm glad you asked because I haven't really talked much about nootropics for sleep. Um, I made the video on some of my favorite nootropics for sleep um, in the past, but no, nothing's changed. I'm currently using Shodan. I'm using Tribulus. 
Sometimes I'm using ZMA, but not too often. And uh, lemon balm extract, I'm, I'm enjoying that. And yeah, I've tried several things of which I mentioned to all of you on previous live streams that didn't do much for me, like um, magnolia bark. Here and there, I will use melatonin in the form of uh, dream water. If you look up dream water, it is a great product. They'll likely sell it at a local gas station, kind of like five hour energy. I really like it. I'm using that like once or twice a week, uh, typically on days when I've ingested something like phenylpyrastam, because with phenylpyrastam, like I'm up, I'm awake. It's night, I'm in bed and my eyes are open. So that's the time when melatonin seems to work uh, pretty well for me. I actually tried um, Gorilla Mind has a product, um, Gorilla Dream. I took that. It was okay. I didn't notice too much from it. I don't think I would get it again, but not bad. Nice ingredient profile. That was good. Oxyrastam and Alpha GPC would mix well in a smoothie. Maybe they would. They don't taste that bad, which is good. I actually like the taste of Alpha GPC. It's not bad. Have you seen the company Space Goods? Nope, I have not. Thoughts on Agmatine Sulfate? I'm taking it. May, will I get it again? I don't know. It's not that expensive, which is okay. And so it's a nice as a general pre-workout uh, supplement to take a small dose. It's decent. Best supplement for cold calling, um, caffeine, if not L-tyrosine, really good. What I need to just like bang out a couple, like, a, you know, a couple hours worth of calls in the evening. I, um, yeah, I'll take some L-tyrosine. I'm good to go. I can actually show you. Um, but hold on. What you got to do is like, just track your contacts every day. Like I track my contacts. This is like a simple contact sheet. And once you have numbers, once you have information, it is good because you have a reference point and you got to improve. So just track them, eat that frog, get it done first thing in the morning. That's the best thing. And if you need to bang them out in the evening or afternoon, then, hey, work on your mindset. Get the pre-prospecting routine right. Like, get off your phone sometime. Get off of social media. Unplug. Take a nap. Uh, like, walk your dog. And then you come from a place of, like, you're empowered. And very often, it's just like, kind of like a mindset. Uh, man, I forgot. I, I, <laughs> I love cold calling. Like, just give me anyone's number. It's so much fun. It is a joy. If I take Tonka Alley and, Fido and Fidogia Agrestis, would that prevent infertility if I'm on TRT? Wow, I have no idea. Because these are newer kind of nootropics. There's not um, research done necessarily on infertility. But I wouldn't be concerned about it. I think you're pretty much good. What's something good to take without needing to take a lot of other things for mental acuity, clarity, and sharpness? That is a great question because of the fact like, hey, we don't want to take so many things for mental acuity, clarity, and sharpness. Alpha GPC, if you don't respond to it that well, then you can consider having a little bit more. You need to really find your sweet spot with that one. Uh, for most people, it's like about 150, uh, 150 mg. Some people go up to like 300 mg or even 500 mg per serving. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't go anywhere close to like one gram a day, though. That's that's crazy for me. I'm taking it. I'm taking like 200 um, milligrams three times a day, typically. In fact, I just took a serving right right before this live stream. And otherwise, I haven't had any. Um, yeah, any nootropics within the past couple of hours. Thoughts on ECA stack? Um, ephedrine, caffeine, aspirin. It's OK for fat loss. It's still overrated in the sense like with ECA, we're as good as like somebody to bring them down from like 30 percent body fat to like. 10% body fat, but if you're like 15% um, body fat and you're trying to get to like 8% or 7%, there's actually research showing that ephedrine is counterproductive. Ephedrine will not help you burn stubborn body fat. For that, you want to look at something like Yohimbine. So it depends what you're using it for. What the greatest thing about ephedrine is, is it is by far the strongest and best appetite suppressant out, out there. It is strong. <laughs> like small dose of it, you will not be hungry for anything. I was uh, I was once on a diet where just kind of like for fun, I tried a PSM, what's it PSMF, protein spared modified fast. You're basically just eating protein, like 800 calories a day, 200 grams of uh, protein, like egg whites, tuna, that was it. I did it for, yeah, I think maybe like a week or two. And with the help of ephedrine, oh my God, it was so, it was easy to do, which it usually wouldn't be 800 calories, right? Um, but yeah, but going back to this, as far as it being a, like a powerful nootropic or anything, no, I think with ephedrine comes and, and caffeine comes with a lot of anxiety. And if you look at the dosages of them in the ECA stack, like it's crazy. It's absurd amounts of caffeine. I think it's like 600 milligrams. The ephedrine is 24, eight, eight, uh, three, eight milligram tabs times three. Yeah. So at 24 times three, serving, like it's just an un, unusually a strange amount and with that comes problems in that once you're actually finished your cycle of being on ECA you're going to bloat like you're going to hold a lot of water because your body is not used to being this stimulated so just generally not healthy I don't know how it became famous but I'm glad that it's not anyway those are my thoughts sorry for everyone who is not interested in that but uh, yeah you, you need to know 
what you're getting into. What nootropics lower GABA? A lot of people use an NAC. Are there any good alternatives? I'm not sure. And also just share share um, with me more, like what are you trying to get out of that experience, like lowering GABA? I don't I didn't know NAC, NAC was really responsible for that. And what do you try to do there? Do you take vitamin U? Nope, I don't. And I don't think it's in my multi uh, multivitamin. Um, yo, thank you. L-tyrosine has helped me tremendously. Yeah, it's starting to get more popular. I've known about it for like a long time and people know, knew about L-theanine. I'm like, hey, just wait until you try L-tyrosine. Mike is off axis. Sorry about that. Can't seem to get this thing right. Thoughts on uh, DOPA, DLP versus PA versus tyrosine. Tyrosine being the best. I think you're talking about um, mucinopurines and phenylalanine. I, I've actually covered this in, in a video that I have coming up, so you'll see that. But I'm surprised to know that um, DLP is, is the best for you. Tell me more about that. Why did you end up getting off TRT? Because when I was on it, like my testosterone level was just skyrocketed, like unusually high and all these side effects that you would expect from um, getting that specifically. So then what happened was I realized, like I figured I just didn't need it because the issue wasn't really that I needed TRT to raise my you know, testosterone. The issue was that I was too low of a body fat percentage. I was trying to have high testosterone levels while being at 8% body fat, which my body didn't like. I'm somebody that grew up a little bit overweight. So for me, like to be healthy, I need to be like between 11 to 15 or something like that. So when I got some body fat back, what happened was I didn't really need TRT anymore. And my testosterone came up. And now fortunately, I found a number of supplements that have helped me out. And I made a video on that too. Um, supplements that help to increase my testosterone. And the main ones I mentioned were um, uh, Tribulus, actually strong emphasis on Tribulus because that's the one I've been using for a very long time. Uh, whereas Tonka Alley, I'm st you know, it's still newer or it falls in that category of newer. Um, Turkestrone, the same thing. I'm really enjoying Turkestrone. By the way, I've covered it in the video. Love it, although it's still newer, but um, but that one was good for me. And then just some insights as far as diet and where people go wrong. Like you need to have your saturated fats. You need, you need to make sure like you're getting at least, I'd say like 25% of your calories from fat um, macros, never 20 or less because it's fat. It's going to be responsible for good, you know, just a good endocrine system overall, right? If you're trying to stick to a schedule with only six hours of sleep, can melatonin make it harder to get out of bed the following morning? Yes. Melatonin is a little bit tricky that way. And it's, it's really interesting with melatonin and why I mentioned dream water, like dream water seems to work well for me. And I didn't have that issue with melatonin very often you take it but then you just like wake up after five hours so it can get you to sleep very quickly but then five hours later you know you're waking up and you're like telling yourself shoot i still want to have a couple hours more of sleep and then you're just there and you're awake so try a different form of melatonin try a different dose and don't give up on it because it took a good like you know just three or four times for me to find a good form of melatonin that actually worked for me and surprisingly it was from uh, bodybuilding.com of all places but that product is no longer there unfortunately I need a section for third shift workers. Yeah, okay. I don't see the question there. What are your thoughts on boron to increase testosterone? Overrated, overhyped? I made a video rating uh, nootropics from a scale of 1 to 10 as far as their effectiveness to build testosterone. So I would make sure to watch that. Best nootropics to lose weight. Caffeine is going to raise your metabolism. So that one would be good. Not, not, not by too much, but something like maybe like 5%. Plus, it'll make you more active. L-tyrosine and rhodiola rosea are going to do a great job to... Um, increase your overall energy levels. And they're also going to um, suppress your appetite, which is obviously good. Make sure your vitamin B is good. And if you're having issues with weight loss, like get a get a full blood panel done. Maybe it's your thyroid, maybe it's your um, testosterone. I think like thyroid issues in general are becoming more and more common and not always because of diet, but just other environmental factors. Yes, when it's thyroid, it's a lot comes down to your uh, just um, like genes, right? Maybe, maybe your parents had an issue, but also water quality isn't as good and um, environmental pollutants and such. So make sure you take a look at that. Pills versus powders. I'm noticing that most nootropics are dosed too high. It'll be powders for me. I always respond better to powders. The only exception to that is L-tyrosine. With that one, I feel better taking it in the pill form for whatever reason. Um, Tonkat Ali, same thing. I, I notice it more so with the powder. And um, Pramorastam, that's one where it tastes so bad. Like there's going to be Things out there which taste so bad that you need to get them in pills or capsules or, or um, whatever, tablets. And um, Tribulus Terrestris, that's another one. Tastes absolutely horrible. And guys, um, if you want any insights on like some of the newer nootropics, just feel free to ask a question. I actually took 120 milligrams of Bromantane this morning. I didn't notice, I haven't noticed much from it, but I'm not really expecting to. But let's see, right? Don't want to be closed mind. Uh, a little off topic topic but how are you enjoying your o-ring it's not off topic we're about productivity we're about performance i've actually got it on me right now 
And one of the things that inspired this live stream was I woke up and my HRV, my heart rate variability was like 130 plus, which means that I'm generally going to be able to take more stress today because I'm usually somewhere between like an 80 to 90. So I really like that. Uh, that aura not only tracks your sleep, but it also tracks like your overall resilience. I really like the fact that it tracks your HRV. So I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, no complaints. It's pretty life changing though, because you, you know, you, you wear it. I don't, I don't like um, watches for me. I like rings, so it worked well for me. So it's going to depend on you. But as far as if you're just looking for a general sleep tracker, I don't think it's that great, but more so if you're like, a, I know, um, athletic, if you're working long days, then I think it's good feedback because it's, it's come to the point where I'm getting very good at observing what foods are working well for me and what foods aren't working well for me. Or like if I were to have a drink, just how it would affect my body there afterwards. Is there anything that can increase in in curiosity? Um, excuse me, increased curiosity to pair with lion's mane. No, nothing as good as that one, unfortunately. Um, can't think of anyone, if, if anyone else has any ideas. L-tyrosine makes me aggressive, very common. What so is just dr drink a lot of water. You can consider taking it with alpha GPC or just something to kind of tone it down. Like that's why, Will J, you know, you, you were mentioning ashwagandha. You're also mentioning like bacopa. The way a lot of these herbal nootropics should be used is a fashion in which you use them with something which will boost dopamine. So you got something boosting your dopamine and then you have something like kind of putting the brakes on it to keep you, you know, still making, make sure that your judgment isn't impaired if that makes sense, right? Maybe fasting is killing my tea. I need more fat. How are you getting yours? That, yes, fasting likely is killing your tea. And there's research done on this actually showing that fasting or intermittent fasting does not help your t uh, t testosterone levels and also that a low carb diet is not ideal. So if you, I mean, if your goal really is high, high test, then eat more, <laughs> eat more. You look like a pretty lean guy, meaning your insulin sensitivity is good, which is, which is decent. How I'm getting mine is I personally don't like saturated fats. I just, you know, I don't respond well to them. I don't feel good. I gain weight easier. So I'm not, I'm more just mindful of like what not to eat. I don't eat a lot of fatty meats. I also don't eat cheese. Cheese is like a no for me. So what I am eating a little bit more of is, um, um, I love Brazil nuts specifically. They're high in selenium, which is good good for testosterone as well. And then um, egg yolks, egg yolks are decent, right? What else, guys? I feel like you're right about TRT. It's not necessarily a nootropic, but it, but because it could just make you obsessed with sex. Absolutely. It's more of a, just a distraction, honestly, but that's my, my experience. Sustantion and tribulus. I'm using them both together. I'm actually really enjoying them together. Like um, I take my sustantion in the morning. I don't notice too much of a benefit with it like testosterone and what you would expect from it that way but overthinking i'm overthinking a, a far lot less thanks to sustange so and i wasn't too sure about that but now i can like you know really say with certainty it did help me with that and i've ordered more i've ordered uh more of it so it's on its way you should make a video on an optimal or on daily diet for optimal health yeah, yeah you know there's a, a lot of video ideas but every time i learn like when i deviate away from nootropics i don't really get much attention so i'd rather just make content with which is going to make the you know, it's going to make a difference for the masses. Maybe I'll, you know, if you have any other way in which you would recommend I get that out there, then, you know, let me know. But I talk like on my Instagram handle, like Michael Dougal Toronto, I talk about a lot of things outside of nootropics. If you guys want to get to know me better, why is Lion's Mane making me depressed? If it is, you're not the only one take time off of it. It could as well be the uh, specific form of lion's mane that you got it from. You can shed some light. Where did you get it from? What's your dose like? And that's been a lot of people's experience that they got it from somewhere online. It wasn't the best brand. Then they went somewhere else. They went to Nootropics Depot. Maybe they got the eight to one and then they had a good experience. And that's happened with, yeah, that's happened time and time again. Is back on mine, Bacopa good? I'm not getting any other type of Bacopa ac uh, extract in India. I don't know much about it. If you want to send me a DM on Instagram later, I can look into it for you. Uh, and guys, yeah, um, um, on that point, if you send me a, a DM on Instagram, I apologize. I will get to it. I see the messages. I will get to them. Uh, just the Patreons, obviously, they're going to take my first priority. I check that every single day. But everyone on Instagram, I will get to your message. If it's more urgent, more important, then drop a comment on YouTube. I'm getting getting to the comments usually within three or four days. So that's good. Um, I don't think you've talked about maca root. Any good? At, yeah, I have talked about it a little bit. It's it's okay for energy levels. I mean, I don't even think it's like a six or seven out of ten. It's more like a three or four. The only good thing about it is that it's not expensive and side effects are fairly uncommon. But if you're expecting to have good, you know, like a good experience with it as far as boosting your mood, maybe boosting your testosterone, you're gonna have a much better experience taking something like ashwagandha. Um, as far as like it um, building up your energy levels, no, nothing like that. Ch -ch -ch. 
Oh, that's why. My microphone. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for clarifying that with respect to the microphone. Uh, um, elaborate on Turkestron. Watch your video. But I'm, uh, yeah, so Turkestron, um, I mentioned the specific brand, Black Forest. There's a discount uh, discount code in that specific video, Turkestron. Maybe I'll, I'll drop it in here as well. And I'm, I'm noticing it working like everything you'd expect it. You'd expect from it better joint health. Um, it could be placebo, and I'm totally open minded to that. I'm like 45 days in, maybe 45 days plus. But yeah, I'm enjoying it, and it's always nice when a new like testosterone, you know, promising product hits the market, and we'll see if it proves with time. Anything for COVID flu? Care to share like more about that? Are you experiencing like the after effects, or where are you with that? But um, Reishi, we talked about it earlier. That one's supposed to be really good. What is your top five stacks for focus? Oh my gosh. And to calm down slash reduce anxiety. That's a pretty loaded question. Like top five stacks. Watch the video on 10 simple nootropic stacks. You'll find that. Yeah, you'll find that pretty informative. Lion's mane lowers DHT. Yes, indeed it does. Um, top three nootropics for studying. Also love your channel. What you do with the keyboard. Amazing. Thank you very much. I would say uh, Paracetam, Bacopa Mineri, and Alpha GPC. And if you can't find Paracetam, then Nupep would be decent. I'm going to wrap. Um, Cool, cool. TRT is way more than just for sex. Yep, energy levels, everything. Like you notice it as soon as you take it. You take it, you know, ambition, drive, energy level, just mental clarity, confidence. It's it's as powerful as you expect it to be. And it's, it's pretty nice just experiencing that for a little bit. Only like had um, you know, I've tried it for like four to six months, then I tried it once once again. So it's to clear overthinking. What else is good for overthinking? Lion's mane is great. Um Overthinking oxyrastam may be decent as far as the newer nootropics. Um, nothing there specifically. You may like magtine, magnesium, l threonate. It's decent. Only thing is, it's it's kind of expensive. But what's great about it is, you can take it morning. You can take it in the evening. Some people use it before bed, and that's pretty cool. And you may just want to look at the different forms of ashwagandha. Like I've learned to not be closed minded about ashwagandha. There's the general like ashwagandha root. Then there's the extracts. There's the KSM 66. That's the best when it comes to performance, productivity, from my experience. But then we also have some of the other forms, and they're decent. Should you cycle off ashwagandha? If so, what alternative? I would, yeah, I would go something like two months on, two weeks off. Maybe, um, yeah, I I wouldn't go like five days on, two days off. You probably won't get the best, um, yeah, best benefit from it that way. If you are to go like three months on, then yeah, like three weeks off could be decent. I've not found it that important to really cycle off of it. That's been my experience personally. So now, I, for me, when I travel, for instance, I'm not taking it, and it keeps things simple for me. Sustanch is good for d increasing DHT. Cool. Best nootropics for energy later in the day without disrupting sleep. Man, I hate to talk about L-tyrosine so much, but that one's going to be key. Uh, try this little combo, L-tyrosine and phosphatidylserine. I've been using this combo together along with some alpha-GPC very often, like later uh, you know, closer to that time when I'm hungry, I'm tired, I need to get stuff done, but I don't want anything which is going to compromise uh, my sleep quality. And now that, that one stack has been working really well for me. Phosphatidylserine is really good, specifically when you're sleep deprived, when you're a little bit stressed out. And, and it even has a good use if you use it um, along with caffeine. I find that with caffeine, some of the side effects just make it are such that like I can't study, I can't learn things. And I find that phosphatidylserine kind of like nicely tones things down. And guys, so we are going to hop off of this, but I'll, I'll do my best to drop timestamps or some of them as soon as I can. I appreciate your support, whether it's the affiliate links, dropping a like, and you know, even just showing up here. You guys are, are all important to me, and I'm thinking about you guys a lot. Like, hey, what do we do to add more value to this channel and help people out? It's all about helping. Talk to you guys soon. Enjoy you all being here. I'm going to click end.